Welcome to this brief uh, instruction video that is going to explain to you how you can use Excel to estimate the parameters of the Nelson model to fit a set of uh, bonds with observed market prices. The Nelson and Siegel model is actually a very simple tool to provide a description of the term structure and uh, I think that can be helpful, for example, if you want to have yields for, for, for bonds that are not traded, which have different maturities than those on the, on the term structure of traded ones. And um, the model is kind of pretty flexible. It facilitates most empirically observed shapes of the term structure. And uh, the model also generates a reasonable behavior for both the instantaneous forward rates and the spot rates. So Nelson and Siegel's model has actually two specifications. I think the, the main form is uh, the model for the instantaneous forward rates, and that's the one that is specified on this slide. So that one has four parameters, uh, beta zero representing the long-term forward rate, beta one, the difference between the long rate, beta two, the difference between the medium and long rate, and, and finally a measure T1, that's kind of a decay measure, uh, which kind of says something about how important the short and medium term rates are when fading away in the future. So this is the model and, and probably more important one is the next one. So uh, this is, uh, we can kind of get the spot rates, of course, from the forward rates. And this is done actually in this article by Nelson and Siegel. And that would result in the following specification. This is the one that we're actually going to estimate. And so, for example, uh, just a very simple illustration, I guess, is this example. Suppose we have this uh, set of observations uh, on the yield curve. And uh, so we have a spot rate for 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30 years. Actually, I got this data, I guess, from Bloomberg. And so we can see the blue picture, which is also from Excel. And I think it's some kind of spline fitting. Uh, a line that you see here, but it is kind of uh, humpy bumpy, and 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 so we have a more smooth function, and also we want to have uh, perhaps an analytical expression in order to make it easier to do any calculations, and so we can use the, the solver, Excel solver for this, and 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 what we do with the solver is actually we have this table with the sp the maturities in the in the left column in the second column we have the observed yield to maturities and and the yellow column represents the ones predicted by the Nelson and Siegel model and of course there's an error term which is kind of specifying the difference between the uh, fitted and the observed value and uh, finally uh, the most the two most right columns in the spreadsheet provide the parameters for the Nelson and Siegel model. So the beta zero, the beta one, the beta two, and the lambda. And uh, we structure this spreadsheet in such a way that we let the solver decide on which beta zero, beta one, beta two, and lambda to choose. And uh, uh, in such a way that the, that the sum of the errors is basically minimized. And so when we do this, uh, Excel may actually uh, give us the red curve, um, and, and, and so uh, that provides a much smoother version than the blue one which we initially had. Well, this is perhaps not the most interesting problem that you have, but to see at least that it's kind of resulting in smooth uh, curves, uh, where it really is a practical uh, uh, use for this model is when you have a set of observed uh, uh, bond prices with different maturities and you want to fit the term structure on that set. And there are of course other ways to do that. Uh, you could for example use the bootstrap procedure. I think that's that's kind of described in many textbooks. textbooks. Um, but here we will use uh, the Nelson and Siegel model. And uh, so fitting the curve directly on bonds. And how do we do it? Well, we first need to get a set of bonds with different maturities and prices. Then we need to set up the Nelson and Siegel model and use the Excel solver to find a parameter that generates the best fit with the observed bond prices. 
let's get started at the level of the spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet um, is a, um, a, a set of bonds. I uh, created a universe with 30 bonds. And for each bond I have a maturity, I have a coupon rate, I have a price, and, 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 and those are the basic data needed for this, this calculation. I also calculate a price based on a Nelson and Siegel model. Of course, I have a pricing error. So I have a model price and a true price, and I have an error, of course. And you can see that this error is pretty substantial, at least for the choice that I made now for the Nelson and Siegel model. And well, the question, of course, is can we get a fit of the Nelson and Siegel model that is better than the one that I have currently set up? And so, uh, just a bit of explanation, what is in the spreadsheet. So in this column A, I have here the time identifier. So these are cash flows due in one year, two year, three years. These are the cash flows. So cell B8 is the first cash flow to be expected from bond one. And it's the same time the last one since it's, it has a maturity of one year. And so the cash flow is 1050. Second bond has a coupon of 40. And given a face value of 1000, uh, I can calculate the cash flows for this bond. So that's 40 uh, in the first year and 1040 after the second one. And in a similar fashion, uh, 35 for bond number three in the first year, 35 in the second year, and finally 1035 in the third year, etc. etc. Well, perhaps I should say that this is, of course, a simplified universe of bonds. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying is that, that this is the universe that you will get from practice. In practice, of course, your, your bonds will have properties that are not exactly four, five, six years. So they will have uh, days left, months left, and, and you will have to deal with, of course, accrued interest. But uh, the, the procedure for using the Nelson and Siegel model is exactly the same, just the computations in the spreadsheet are a bit better. But actually for this particular uh, type of bonds and, and, and the real world bonds as, as well. I mean, this Nelson and Siegel model is, is very convenient. <clears throat> so we're going to use the Excel solver for that. And in order to do it, I have to kind of set up just uh, the parameters for the Nelson and Siegel model. And I've shown you that there are at least a, a number of parameters at play. So we have B0, B1, B2, and let's say B0 to 3%, whatever. Uh, so we need to have some realistic start for the model. And you can see also that the green cell here represents the pricing error over all bonds. And, and that's pretty substantial, of course. And so now let's get the Nelson and Siegel model. So we first need to set up the objective function. And that's in this case cell AJ6 that presents um, the... Uh, uh, the sum of the errors that we want to minimize that. So I don't click max, but I click the minimum value. And of course I do that by changing uh, the cells. And in this case, I selected the cell AG1 to AG4, the yellow range in, in my spreadsheet. And Excel will try to find parameters that will give me a better fit than the one that I currently have. Well, it's sometimes wise to set up constraints. Well, you could, for example, say that parameter B0 should be zero. We don't observe negative rates. And we could set up other constraints as well, but just let's see first what happens with this one. And so let's press simply the solve button and, and, and see what happens. So apparently the solver has found a solution. All constraints are satisfied, so that sounds good. We press OK. And indeed, we will see here a, a, a values for the uh, Nelson and Siegel model. And in particular, we see that the, the, the long rate is 4% and, 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 and the corrections on that for short and intermediate ranges are 1.3% and, and 9 .0 0.0995. And of course, the, the, the DK parameter is 3.02. And it gives us a, a pricing error. And when we look now at the errors, we will see that indeed the pricing error is kind of limited. So it's something like less than 
three percent. Huh? So this one minus two point six one six one on a price of eleven uh, forty six. That's that's an error of something like uh, zero point two five percent. I think that's kind of acceptable. This one is a bit more off the fitted line. But in general, most pricing errors are below 1%. So that's a nice result. And uh, of course, we, we may want to actually see the, uh, the, the, Nelson, the, the, the yield curve that we've estimated on this. So I'm going to hide all these columns. And I'm going to, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, well, let's, let's do it differently. So I'm going to the rates now. I'm going to create a little chart to see what we got. And we do a simple line chart. And now we have here the, the uh, model. I'm going to move it to a, uh, to a more visible area. I have to undo this first. So we're going to unfreeze the paints. So here's the graph. And this is uh, the term structure as is implied by this set of uh, interest rates. So this is the general result that you get. Uh, I must admit that this is a kind of clean solve, <laughs> so to speak. I must say in reality uh, the solver may not work that, that smoothly as it did in this instance. And, and so you may want to play with the constraints, for example, or try to solve it again. This is actually, uh, strangely enough, uh, sometimes uh, result in a different solutions. So I press solve another time. If you looked well, you may have noticed that it was still one digit that was changing. Now let's try it another time. Now it's kind of converging. But it might be uh, interesting to use some of the options as well, like here. The, we have the GOG nonlinear, so there are other solutions too. Um, and of course, there are some options here that sometimes are helpful. So I'm losing a different random seed or put on the kind of speeds up the whole thing and also allows uh, more solutions to be considered and, and, and preventing the system from getting stuck in one area of the search field. Anyway, this is the brief explanation. So this is how you get uh, the Nelson and Siegel model. Thank you for listening and I hope that it was useful for you. Thanks.